The M4 MacBook Air is Apple's best laptop deal in a decade, and I think a ton of people are going to buy it, but if you're using this right out of the box, you are missing out because there's some easy things you can do in macOS to make it a much better experience. With setting changes, customization, window management, and so much more, here are the 20 first things to do with your new M4 MacBook Air. Now, the first thing you should do is to get more display space. Listen, some of you have a 13-inch MacBook Air, and while it is ultra portable, it can be quite cramped when you have a few windows open. So there's a few things you can do to get more space. The first and easiest thing to do is to not have the dock permanently glued to the bottom of the screen. In fact, you can auto hide it to reclaim all of that space. To do this, go to settings, click on desktop and dock, and then toggle the options to automatically hide and show the dock. Now you can use the full display on your MacBook and when you need to access your dock, just drag your cursor to the bottom of the display and the dock will pop up. And when you remove your cursor, the dock will go away again. Another thing you can do to get more display space is to change your Mac's default resolution. To do this, go to settings, then click on displays, and then you'll see a few different options for resolution. And if you click on the option for more space, you can actually make the windows and controls smaller on your Mac. And this will let you get a little bit extra usable screen real estate on your MacBook Air. Now, one of the great things about the new version of Mac OS is that Apple has finally added an easy way to manage windows just by dragging the window towards the edge of the screen to automatically resize it for easier multitasking. So for example, I can drag this window to the left and then I can drag another one to the right of the display and it creates a perfect split screen multitasking setup. I can also take my cursor, put it in the middle and easily resize these windows to make one section bigger or smaller. I can even drag four windows to each corner of the display to have four apps open at once. You can even access more options by hovering your cursor over the green button on your apps window, like splitting your apps between the top and bottom of the display, as well as all the window resizing methods I just showed you. You can even mix and match different layouts, so give it a try for yourself. Now, even though this looks really well managed, you may notice one problem with Apple's window tiling feature. There are big gaps between each app with a lot of unused space. Now, while it looks nice aesthetically, it's not that practical for such a small screen. However, there is a way to turn this off. To do this, go to settings, then go to desktop and dock and scroll down until you see tiled windows have margins. Turn that setting off and now when you go to tile these windows, you'll notice there's no unused gaps in between them, letting you use even more of your MacBook's display. Now, one thing I do on every Mac is to make sure I'm managing all my system resources. And to do that, I like to download an app called Clean My Mac. And after I download it, right from the menu app bar, I can see just how my Mac is using my system resources. So I can see things like my CPU, my storage, my battery life, and my available memory. And I really like how you can clear all the unused apps from your Mac's memory with one single click, freeing up available memory space, and I can make sure my Mac is running fast at all times. And one thing that always happens to every Mac I get is after a while, it just gets loaded with a ton of weird files and system junk from downloading all of these apps, extensions, and weird leftover resources from downloading macOS updates. And a lot of the time, they're just sitting there eating up my precious storage space. So I use the cleanup feature to easily find and clean up those unused files, system junk, and my clutter removes duplicate files, making sure I get to use every bit of my precious Mac storage. And I hate managing my devices, so I love that Clean My Mac does all of this, including finding harmful viruses, threats and vulnerabilities, or other performance related issues that may be slowing down my Mac, as well as keeping my Mac's apps updated with a quick and effective scan at the press of a button. This is just a beautiful looking app that really makes managing my Mac easy and hassle free. So to get your own copy of Clean My Mac, check out the link in the description for a seven day free trial and use my code Greg's Gadgets to get 20% off. And thank you to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video. All right, another thing you'll want to set up on your new MacBook is Hot Corners, which lets you trigger fast actions just by dragging your cursor to the corners of the screen. In fact, macOS by default already has one corner enabled on the bottom right. And if you drag your cursor to the bottom there, you'll see that it shows your notes, but you can actually customize every single corner on your Mac. To do this, go to settings, 
go to desktop and dock, and then scroll down until you see the hot corners button on the bottom. Click this and you'll see a new window with the options for all four corners. There's some really helpful ones here like automatically locking your Mac, putting your display to sleep, starting a screensaver, activating your notification center, and so on. Another setting you'll want to change is your trackpad settings. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to trackpad, and from here, you have a lot of options. My recommendation is to first change the tracking speed. I like to set this more towards the middle because I find the default Mac OS cursor speed just a little bit too slow, but you can customize this however you want. Because the M4 MacBook Air is such a great deal, I really think it's going to be popular with first time users. So a lot of maybe Windows users switching over to the Mac. So another thing you might wanna change is how you activate the right click. By default, you can just use two fingers to bring up right click by clicking the trackpad, but it might be easier to change the right click setting. So you press the bottom right of the trackpad and then this will activate right click. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is to enable a gesture called App Expose. This is a really helpful gesture that quickly displays all of your open windows for that active application, letting you switch quickly between them. To do this, go to the More Gestures tab, then click here for the gesture for App Expose. Personally, I like to set it as a swipe down on the trackpad with three fingers. And now when you do that, let's say you have a bunch of Safari windows open, when you take your three fingers and swipe down on the trackpad, you'll see all of your active windows open and you can choose which one you want to bring to the front of all of these windows. I love this feature. It makes managing multiple windows super easy and I am not sure why Apple has this gesture disabled by default. It is that helpful, so definitely enable it. All right, let's look at some customization options so you can make your macOS experience a lot less boring. And I gotta start with the default wallpaper. This is by far the worst default paper I have ever seen on macOS. It is very boring, so let's change that. To do that, go to settings and then go to wallpaper. And here you will find an amazing selection of wallpapers from Apple free of charge. You have dynamic wallpapers that can move, landscape wallpapers, cityscape wallpapers, and even the wallpaper that is on your MacBook Air box, but for some reason isn't the default wallpaper when you open your laptop. Explain that one. Now, the cool thing about a lot of these wallpapers from Apple is that they are dynamic. So you can even see them when you are on your lock screen or even set them as your screensaver. Another thing you may wanna change is the accent color in macOS. To do this, go to settings, then go to appearance. By default, the multicolored accent will be selected, but you can pick from a few defaults here to give your Mac a unique color-coded vibe. So you can pick your favorite color. And what's really cool about this is that it changes the color highlights in different areas on Mac OS. So you can see like the highlight in the menu bar changes, the color of the cursor changes, the color in some of the apps changes, and it even changes the color of the toggles in Control Center. Now, while you're in Control Center, one thing you're gonna wanna do is to customize your menu bar because there is a lot of frequently used settings in here that you might wanna change. But the problem is, is when you have them in this control center area, you're always two clicks away from changing a lot of these uh, common settings. So to access these more frequently, well, all you have to do is just drag and drop them to the top of your menu bar. So now you can access settings like Bluetooth, volume, display brightness, or change focus modes just directly from the menu bar instead of having to dig through Control Center. Another thing you'll want to customize is your desktop. And the easiest way to get that customized is with widgets. Widgets are permanent information you can have displayed on your desktop. And the easiest way to add a widget is to right click the desktop and then you will see an option to edit widgets. So just click on that and you'll see a new pop-up window on your Mac with all of these widgets from your Mac apps. And if you have an iPhone, you'll even be able to use your iPhone widgets directly on your Mac. So you can display things like the weather, your calendar, your food journal, your car information, and so on, all directly on your Mac's desktop, right next to all your folders and icons. Now, one thing that's easy to do on Mac OS, even without an app, is to change the icon on custom folders. So basically on your Mac, you're going to want to get a folder. Now, if you don't have a folder, you can just basically right click the desktop, hit new folder, and you have this new untitled folder. Now right click on this folder, then click on get info. 
Now you'll see that there's a folder icon in the top over here. And all you have to do is just take a picture on your Mac and just drag and drop it on that folder icon. And then you'll see that your folder was replaced with that picture. And that's a really easy way to get a custom folder image right on your Mac. And you can choose whatever you want, customize your folders with whatever image. I'm not judging you. I'm not, I'm not judging you whatever you wanna do, okay? Now, I should take my own advice because these customization settings and cleanly organizing your Mac makes it so much more pleasant to work on. But I gotta be honest, I am not organized. I am a complete and total mess with organization and my Mac desktop doesn't look like this. It looks like this. <laughs> Thankfully, if you're a disorganized slob like I am, Apple does have a setting that makes it super easy to clean your Mac. To do this, go to View, then click on Use Stacks, and just like that, your Mac instantly cleans and organizes all of your desktop files into organized categories. You can even choose how Stacks organizes your files. Just go back to view and then select Group Stacks and you can find a few different options to suit your personal organization style. Now, one of the coolest features on your new MacBook Air is how it works with your iPhone. You'll notice there's a new app in your dock already called iPhone Mirroring. When you open this, you'll see instructions on how to connect your iPhone so you can use your phone on your Mac and pretty much all of your apps and all of your iPhone features can work directly on your Mac. It even plays your iPhone's audio through your Mac speakers, which makes watching TikToks when you're supposed to be working or when you're in class, uh, kind of next level. Don't do that, but you can. Now this feature is so advanced that you can even drag and drop files from your Mac to your iPhone and from your iPhone to your Mac. It seriously speeds up my workflow so much. Now, one annoying thing with this feature is that by default, it does require you to enter your Mac password anytime you want to connect to your iPhone, which is kind of redundant if you already unlocked your Mac and you're using it. So you can disable this. And to do this, you have to have iPhone mirroring open and then click up here and click on settings and then check the option to automatically authenticate. And this means that you can skip entering your password every time you want to connect to your iPhone. Now, another cool thing about this integration is that your Mac can now show your iPhone's notifications. Now, while this feature is helpful, when I use my Mac, I personally hate getting distracted by all these notifications. And I don't know about you, I get a ton of notifications on my iPhone that can just take me out of the zone. So even though this is a helpful feature, I personally like to manage what notifications come in or turn them off completely. To do this, go to settings, then go to notifications, and then you'll see a toggle for allow notifications from your iPhone. If you want this feature on, just make sure this is set on, but if you want to edit this feature, click here, and then you can either turn this feature off or you can go through all the apps on your iPhone and then choose which ones you want to send notifications to your Mac. Also, if you do have this feature on, I also like to disable them from playing the sound because I can clearly see the notification come in through the top right corner of my Mac and the notification dings on the loud Mac speaker can be very disorienting. So I do like to turn this setting off. Now, one of the upgrades on your MacBook Air is that it has a new center stage webcam, which means that if you go into a video call, well, you can actually move around and the camera will lock onto your face and follow you. It's a really cool trick. However, there's some other nice things that you can do with this MacBook webcam. So whenever you are on a video call, you'll see that there's a green menu bar icon in the menu bar. So when you click on this, you'll see that you have a few options. Number one, if you don't like the center stage tracking feature, well, you can turn that off, but then you also have other options. Like you can blur the background, you can adjust the lighting, you can set reactions and you can change your background. And this is my favorite one, because if you have a messy room and you don't want anyone to see, well, you can enable this and they won't. Again, I'm a messy person, so 
I use this one a lot. Now, when you click on this feature, you'll see by default, it automatically replaces your background with a solid color. But if you click over to the environments tab, you'll find some really nice backgrounds directly from Apple Park. So you can pretend like you have a big fancy office. But my favorite thing to do is to actually upload my own custom photo to use for my background. To do this, click on the Photos tab, then hit the plus button. You can either choose from your existing photo library or directly upload a file. I'll upload my own file here, and now I can set my background to be the office from Severance. Your Audi makes Mac setup videos. Now, another thing you can change here is the microphone mode from standard to voice isolation. Now, this lets your microphones on your MacBook Air focus on picking up only your voice and not background noise. So if you're on a video call in a noisy environment, like at a cafe or there's like a screaming baby or your dog's barking in the background, this will quiet all of that out and just pick up on your voice. This is a test with the voice isolation turned off. This is a test with the voice isolation turned on. It is a really great setting. All right, but those are my first 20 things you should do on your new M4 MacBook Air. I really hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about your Mac. And if you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more videos, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.